morning, welcome to another weekly vlog. How is everybody? I hope you're all well and had a nice weekend. I'm on my way back to the car from the dental hygienist. That's where I've been this morning. Just thought I'd film the start of this vlog somewhere other than inside my house to make it marginally more interesting. Excuse me. Had a very early start this morning. Feels like it's been a long day already. I was on the treadmill at half six to do, and I left the house at half seven to get my car into Exeter to the to the due for service at eight. Then I came back home, not actually home, but back here for a dental appointment at quarter past nine, which I've just been to, and I'm now going home for a cup of much needed coffee. Look at my lovely tulips, aren't they nice? They have a little feeling of spring about them. I did um, put a picture on Instagram of them on Saturday, I think. A little bit past their best now, but they really are lovely. I put a two pence piece in the um, water jug, vase, whatever you want to call it, and it stops them from curling their heads over. What's the word? I'm like, God, I'm unable to speak this morning, apparently. Completely lost the ability to speak. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, lolling their heads over. That's the best I can come up with. <laughs> God. Deary me. So yes, a busy morning this morning. Out of the house at half seven. Took my car for a service. When I got to take my car for a service, I, to be fair, I haven't been to the garage. It goes to the main dealer because it's still under warranty at the moment. It's got a service package because I got it last year. It was only a year old, so it's still got all the um, package, free servicing and stuff. So it goes into the main dealer, which the nearest one is in Exeter. So that's where I went. And my previous car didn't go to the main dealer for the last few years because it was just more it was cheaper to take it elsewhere. And it was an old car by that point. So it went into a little local garage. So I probably haven't been to the main dealer to take a car in for a service for maybe like three years, something like that. And off I went to Exeter, drove to where the main dealer used to be, and it wasn't there anymore. <laughs> so I had to phone them up and go, where are you? You've moved. Luckily, they hadn't moved too far away. But when I got to the new premises, it was like space age. It was like this big white warehouse with um, illuminated exit, three doors, roll up doors, electric roll up doors with illuminated X's and green ticks and red X's above the doors to indicate which door you could go in. And then you, the door automatically opened when you went up to it. Um, and you drive into what looks like the inside of a car ferry, if you've been inside of a car ferry, um, with all lanes and everything. It was all painted bright white. It was so space agey. And then they had people waiting to take your car from you and drove it off. And then you went into the little office and d did the paperwork. And then someone else comes and you go out back out into this sort of car ferry bit and there's your courtesy car waiting for you it was bizarrely space age honestly bizarrely space age um i was just telling my mum about it on the phone <laughs> anyway that was the excitement for this morning then i went to the hygienist then i came home and how was everybody's weekend ours was okay very quiet <laughs> Very quiet, ha <laughs> ha. So if anybody's having raucous, exciting, lots to do weekends at the moment. Yesterday I hit a new low in reality TV. I watched six episodes, one after the other, of Married at First Sight Australia, which is actually very addictive. Um, what else did we do over the weekend? Not an awful lot, really. We did family Zoom on Saturday night. Um, that That's really about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can get. That's all I've got for you. Right, let me have a sip of my coffee. Right, plans for Monday, such as those. It's about half eleven already. Got a little bit of um, eBay. And I'm not. I'm doing my eBay a different way this week. I am going to do a little bit every day rather than all in one go. Mostly because today I was out this morning till later on in the morning anyway, so I couldn't get an early start on it. So I decided just to try it a different way this week. Um, I'm only listing three things a day anyway, so it's the work of minutes, really, rather than 
lots to do but I just thought that might good doing that every day would give me a little bit more structure to my days as well which I'm feeling like I'm needing um just been through the comments from last from yesterday's video last week's weekly vlog loads of really strong feeling about the Charles and Diana thing that I was talking about from the crown last week um yeah lots of really strong opinions on that in in both directions but it's quite interesting to see how polarizing that whole issue still is and ha and also interesting that people have such strong opinions when as I, I think I said last week none of us knows what goes on behind closed doors none of us know we only know what we are told by the media and by people who put their own spin on it and so, so it, it's quite interesting isn't it that it's something that um creates such a storm of opinions really but yeah in, interesting topic of conversation Re really interesting i enjoy very much reading all the comments on that um what else there was a couple of things i wanted to tell you about from the comments but i've got a note of those around there so perhaps i'll do that later anyway i'm gonna go and get on with my day and i'll catch up with you when i've got something to say of any interest which may be thursday at this rate it's 25 to 5 and apparently move on there, i've just heard on the car radio today is known as blue monday it's the most depressing day of the year and that's without factoring in covid and lockdown i have to say i'm actually feeling pretty low today pretty low the lowest i've felt since the beginning of this lockdown um i don't know why no particular i think the weather's bloody horrible um i was trying to sort out some financial stuff earlier and ended up having a row on the phone with my bank because they were being ridiculously difficult over a, re a refund that's gone missing out of my it's ridiculous really a refund has gone missing out of my account it never hit my bank account and it was from Marks and Spencer's it was 79 pounds really doesn't matter in the big scheme of things but it hasn't hit my bank account and it should have done and Marks and Spencer's are blaming the bank and the bank are blaming Marks and Spencer's and they're passing me back one from the other and nobody's taking bloody responsibility and that annoys the shit out of me excuse my language but one of my least favorite things is people <coughs> sorry I'm choking on irritation one of my least favourite things is people not taking responsibility for when things go wrong. And it's one of their faults, because it's not my bloody fault. It's either Marks and Spencer's or the bank. The fault lies in one and just neither of them want to take responsibility for it. And it's driving me far more mental than a 79 quid refund ought to be doing. But... So I had a row with the bank and told them exactly what I thought of them um, on the phone because I was so frustrated and that didn't go so well. <laughs> and then I phoned up about my car because I was hanging around waiting to go and pick it up. They told me it should be ready just after lunch. And by three o'clock I hadn't heard from them so I rang and got put through to someone in Barnstable who didn't know anything about it and she accused me of ringing Barnstable and I hadn't, I'd run the Exeter number because it was an 01392 number which is Exeter, I mean they may have it diverted to Barnstable, not Barnstable, Taunton um, so that annoyed me and then when I eventually managed to speak to someone in Exeter after two more phone calls I might add sorry I just need to check on my oil Yeah, when I eventually managed to speak to someone in the Exeter, they said, oh yeah, we phoned you at um, one o'clock this afternoon, your car was ready then. I look at my call log, they didn't phone me. And uh, so I was incensed by that because they didn't phone me. Why are they saying they did phone me? They could have said, we meant to phone you and we're really sorry we didn't. But I'd been hanging around not doing much for hours waiting to hear from them. 
to go and collect my car, you know. I know it's not all important in the big scheme of things, but it's just, it was just frustrating and I wasn't in the best mood anyway. And um, when I got there, I showed them my call log and still they didn't really apologise. <sighs> so annoying. We called you. No, you didn't bloody call me. Ooh. So yeah, in normal circumstances, all this stuff would be mildly annoying, but today it just feels like it's really hugely annoying and it's put me in a bad mood but never mind I came home I've also got an absolutely banging headache which I think is related to the hygienist this morning I think it's just all the messing with my teeth has done something to the, all of my head for some reason I don't know why so there's that so the headache isn't helping and I came home and I really just wanted to crawl into bed and for the rest of the day and watch crap on the television but my steps are also really low today I obviously haven't moved enough so what I'm doing is making a pasta sauce we're having pasta and meatballs tonight so I'm just making a basic tomato sauce with a tin of tomatoes onion garlic Worcester sauce salt and pepper herbs usual stuff you know and some meatballs Ooh. Uh, my head. and um, then I'm going to go on the treadmill and just do some steps don't know how many I'm going to do I'm going to see how I feel when I get on there probably won't make it to 10,000 today but I'm going to do some and I don't doubt that even though that is the last 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 thing that I fancy doing I will feel better when I've done it good morning it's Tuesday the day has not started well <sighs> woke up I've still got a headache it's 7 38 I should say still got a headache I think related to my teeth probably not a bad one but just in the background you know and I got up got myself on the treadmill to do my walking and it didn't work it's broken it has completely broken the it turns on but the belt doesn't move we have had it probably for the best part of 20 years so it may just have completely died but it's just so annoying when I'm trying so hard to get my steps in and step, set the day up with a walk and yes I could go outside in the dark and the cold to walk I could I know that but a I live at the top of a massive great big hill which means that I can't walk on the flat anywhere from home I'd have to go in the car I realise this sounds like I'm making excuses but I have arthritis in my knee and it's very painful when I walk on a hill it doesn't it's not nice at all and it just I just do not enjoy walking on a hill it just it's just like one more obstacle to going out it's another reason to not walk when I'm trying so hard to walk you know um and it's like I reason, need reasons not to walk so very frustrating that very frustrating so I've got into a really nice groove of getting up and walking Ashley's going to have a look at it tonight but he doesn't hold out a lot of hope he's had a <laughs> sorry fog in my throat he's had a quick look at it this morning but he can't see anything so he's going to look at it tonight after work but he says he thinks it might have gone to treadmill heaven in the sky which is sad um yeah, so that wasn't a good start today because I didn't get my steps in yesterday either. So, hmm. <sighs> anyway, today, Tuesday, I'm just about to sit and make myself. I've got my cup of tea here in my cat mug that I love. And I'm about to get my whiteboard, make a little list of what needs doing today. Uh, I'm I'm struggling to keep a positive mindset this week. I, since Sunday, I've been quite low. Um, I try not to bang on about it on here because nobody at the moment needs to hear about anybody else moaning about how low they're feeling, do they? But um, I have been feeling quite low since Sunday and this treadmill thing has not helped at all. And I know it's only a little tiny thing and first world problems and all that, but when things are difficult anyway it sort of exacerbates when things are you know a bit shit doesn't it so anyway not enough positive enough frame of mind to continue talking to you in this vein so I'm gonna go and come back when I'm feeling more positive it is much later now I have curled my hair again 
as you can see. Um, what was I going to tell you? I've put the camera on for something. Maybe just an update. I went out for a walk. It was horrible. <laughs> but I'm really glad I did it. Um, Ash is going to see if he can mend the treadmill tonight. He thinks it's probably the motor or some other thing that I can't remember what he said. I really wish I could remember. What did he say it was? I don't know. It doesn't matter anyway, does it really? But yes, he thought it was... Um, if it's the motor, he probably can't mend it. But we just have to deal with it. It's first world problems, isn't it? Anyway, I'm feeling a lot brighter now. I've just filmed a makeup video with because the light is so horrendous today horrendous i did it with um a ring light and i haven't filmed with a ring light before and i looked awful in the viewfinder i didn't think it was really good quality at all but i've just put it on the computer and it's not too bad so it's salvageable which is good because um or usable anyway which means i don't have to either refilm it or not put up a video tomorrow <laughs> because as usual I've left it till the last minute I'd really quite like to get ahead with filming Wednesday videos because I tend to always film them on a Tuesday and that doesn't give me a lot of time for errors and problems and that sort of thing I need to go and get my cardigan I'm cold but yeah I, sh I will show you my hair curler while I'm there yes it's this which looks terrifying, but isn't particularly terrifying. I'm just warming it up so I can show you. Um, <laughs> it's the Babyliss Curl Secret. It's a knockoff version of the Babyliss Curl Secret, but I got it from Amazon, but they don't seem to have them anymore. Whether Babyliss kicked up a fuss because someone used their patent or something, I don't know. But I've actually found it on eBay for 29.99, so I'll link it below. I think I linked it in Wednesday's video, but... Um, if you're interested, I'll link it below. They were usually really expensive. I think when they started, they were like 60 or 80 quid. Ridiculous price. I wouldn't pay that for a hair curler. But people do, don't they? Um, but yeah, I found it at Argos, I think, on eBay. I've got it for 29.99. So I thought that was a good price. Is it up to temperature yet? You've got the little temperature thingy there. And you can set it to do different amounts of time. So you get your bit of hair like so and you clamp it in like so and you hold it together and when it's sucked it all in it will bleep and then you hold it there clamp together until it bleeps again to tell you the time is up and you pull it out and there you have a curl you see good isn't it Nice and simple. You have to always make sure this side is towards your head, so you sort of flip it over to do the other side. So yeah, it's super easy to use, and I'm getting better at it the more I use it. So I just wanted to show you that, because I knew some people would ask. We're going to do a segment later on on candles. I'm going to tidy out my candle cupboard. So I thought we could do a candle segment, because somebody asked me about candles in the comments, so I thought I would um, do a little chat about candles. Um, Will's coming home later on today. He's struggling a little bit since his exam's finished. He's um, struggling with lockdown in Bath. Um, so he said, could he come home? And we said, yes, of course he could. You don't want your kids struggling, do you? So anyway, yes, yeah, so he's coming home this evening. Right, I'm going to um, go and get on, make some coffee, edit a video, all that stuff. It's about half past four-ish, I think. Maybe it's before that. Oh, it's 20 past four. I have just made this, which is spicy Thai pork to go into lettuce sort of wrap things tonight. Um, that's the recipe, it's from that book I bought in um, Superdrug last last week, was that only last week? It feels like about a decade ago. Um, so yeah, maybe it was the week before actually. I don't remember anyway, but yes, it's from this recipe. It just needs to have some peanuts on the top of it and some lime juice, just let me get the peanuts out so I don't forget. There we are. Right, I need to change my battery in this camera and then we're going to spend some time talking about candles. I am surrounded by my candles. Shall I just give you a sweeping? <laughs> this is my candle collection. I think 
I showed it last summer, last time I cleared the cupboard out. But yes, it hasn't got much smaller, let's put it like that. So somebody asked me last week, I quite often get asked to make a video about candles. I think a whole video about candles is probably pushing it, to be honest. Although I could cheerfully talk about candles all day. I think it's quite a niche subject, isn't it? Not sure there'd be lots of people wanting to chat about that. I've just seen I've got two of the same candle. That's interesting, isn't it? I didn't even know. Ridiculous. Um, one of them's half used. <laughs> but yeah, someone asked me last week to talk about what brands of candles I like. And um, if I recommend any particular ones. And to be honest, it's all a bit hit and miss in terms of brands generally because some really really good candles some really really expensive brands are not great in terms of what I'm looking for in a candle which is generally a nice strong scent and I need one with a packs of punch because my room is my living room is very open plan with high ceilings so there's a lot of space to fill with scent so my preference is for something with a really strong scent although if I lived in a house with smaller rooms I would probably want something less punchy if that any of that makes sense at all um also it depends on what types of scents you like and which rooms you're looking to make fragrant and all of that sort of thing I went off on a tangent there didn't I yeah I was saying that some really really expensive brands of candle don't have an awful lot of throw I'm thinking particularly of a Jo Malone candle. They are ferociously expensive that I had last year that was really disappointing. I think it was an orange blossom one and very disappointing for the price. However, something like a Home Bargain's own brand, that is an example of one there, Wickford & Co, it is their brand. Um, this is 2 99 for this massive great big jar candle. Some of them aren't great, but some of them are absolutely amazing. And the one that I always absolutely love, which I can't show you because it's burning in the lounge at the moment, is the gingerbread one. They have different ones in different seasons, like most brands of candle. And uh, the gingerbread one is just amazing. I always get that every year when it comes out and it's for 2 99 You cannot believe that's a 2 99 candle. This one is Sunkissed Cherry which smells lovely. It smells very almondy, that one, but I haven't lit that one yet, so I couldn't tell you much about that one. Now, the brand that I absolutely love, probably my favourite brand of Bath & Body Works, which are not easy to get in this country. This is an American brand. Um, you can't get them easily in this country. There are a couple of Facebook groups where you can buy them, or eBay, um, but they are not cheap to buy in the UK. Um, they're $24 is the price. It's ba Sorry, it's Bath & Body Works did I say that already? $24 is the price um, and you'll pay around that in pounds in the UK more on occasion. Um, if you look it up on Facebook there are some groups that you can buy them in and most of these I bought when I went to America last time. But um, yes, they are my favourites. You can, of course, use these mailing services, can't you? And I'm getting round to using a mailing service to order them direct from Bath & Body Works when they have their sales on. Um, the, the packaging on these Bath & Body Works ones are amazing. They are three wick ones and they all look so pretty. They have some gorgeous scents. The throw is amazing. They are just one of my favorites that particular one pistachio ice cream is not one of my favorites but they do this is gorgeous lemon mint leaf i love this very minimal packaging that one's nearly at the end i'm nearly at the end of that one but it's just beautiful so i always like this in the morning when i get up early and it's just such an energizing fresh start the day type of scent just lovely and i've got sun washed citrus which also sounds lovely that's very orangey. They've got their um, fragrance notes on the bottom. That one is Sorrento Lemon, Citron, Agave Nectar and Essential Oils. Doesn't that sound lovely? I've got Fresh Sparkling Snow. That wasn't one of my favourites. And the one I've got two of is Sweater Weather, which is an autumnal one. I actually prefer the packaging of that one. I think that's gorgeous. And the notes in that are Fresh Sage, Juniper Berry, Aromat Aromatic Eucalyptus, Fresh Woods with essential oils. Doesn't that sound gorgeous? It is lovely. Very, very nice indeed. 
If you like baking scents, I've got those as well. Strawberry pound cake is just lovely. Hot buttered rum is a lovely Christmassy one. Um, we've got, that wasn't great actually, that one. It's a salted oak bonfire. That's not got loads of throat. It's a lovely scent, but it just hasn't got, it's not very strong. You sort of lose the scent in here a little bit. Cinnamon caramel swirl, yum. Oh, that's lovely. I might have to light that one tonight. Put that one down there. And this one is red velvet cupcake, which is super, super sweet. There. Now, that's vanilla coconut. Again, absolutely gorgeous. Madagascar vanilla toasted coconut and creamy sandalwood. And then we have got pineapple sunrise. That is glorious. Love that in the summer. Really nice and tropical. Is that it? I think that's all of my bath and body work. Oh, no, I've got another one over. Ah, this is my favorite. I've got two, which are my favorite ever. This one, I haven't burnt yet. It's a new one. It's Black Cherry Merlot. My favorite favorite. And the other favorite is Watermelon Lemonade, which is equally gorgeous. Oh, just lovely. Now let's talk about Yankee. I used to love Yankee. They were my favorites until I discovered Bath and Body Works. And I don't think Yankee are as good as they used to be, but there are some that are still my very favorites. And Cozy by the Fire is probably my favorite winter candle scent. It's just such a lovely, unusual. I've never found anything quite like this. It really does smell like a fire, like, like you know, when you've got a fire burning and that smell is just lovely. It's so, so nice. And I've never found anything similar to that. Um, so that is one of my favorites. Another of my current favorite brands is a recently discovered one, which is Goose Creek. This is another American brand, I believe. I think I'm right in saying this. Yes, it is. Um, but these have a EU site. I'll try and leave the link in the description box below. Um, they come from Germany or Holland or somewhere, I think. But they have some really, really good offers. And these are almost as good as Bath & Body Works, I would say. This is in the scent Cozy Kitten. Who knew that was a smell? But apparently it is. Couldn't tell you really what it smells like. Um, Melon Picnic is another one I've got. I haven't tried that one yet. This is absolutely lovely. Brown Sugar Churros. Very, very nice. Love that. And I've also got Fried fried Apple Sugar, which again, it smells delightful, but I haven't tried it yet. Now let's talk about Aldi candles. Um, hit and miss in my experience. This one is very nice, this orange spice. And I haven't lit this one yet, but I've had very good reports from so, several of you guys about this one, Amalfi Lemon. This one says something about, oh, no it doesn't. It doesn't say anything at all. That does smell lovely. It's like a sweetened lemon scent, almost like a lemon sorbet, I would say. So I'm looking forward to lighting that one. I'll probably light that one when my lemon mint leaf is done. Um, some of these are okay, some not so much. This one is sweet almond and macaroon. It smells nice, but I haven't lit it yet. Um, yeah, better for a smaller room though. Sometimes when we have guests over, I'll light an Audi one like that in the bathroom and that that smells really nice. I think it's a small space. It fills it up more easily. Um, I think that's it. Have we got, oh, I know what other ones I wanted to talk to you about. The DW Home. I go, TK Maxx is a good place for candles as well. Again, hit and miss. Usually this brand DW Home is very good. Um, these ones I got before Christmas, I've been a little bit disappointed with. This one in particular, the Silver Spruce. It's okay, but again, it probably needs a smaller room. It's a two wick one, beautiful packaging. I really, I really, I fell in love with the packaging. I mean, look at that, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Real heavy glass, lovely. But anyway, I've banged on about candles for about 10 minutes now, I think, so I think I better stop. Good morning, it's Wednesday. I have been fully convinced until I picked the camera up that it was Tuesday, but in fact, it is Wednesday. Doesn't really matter, all the days are exactly the same at the moment, aren't they? My makeup's looking slightly odd. What if it's the light? Let's try turning this one off. As if I look a bit... Oh, that's slightly better, isn't it? Not too bad. I wanted to show you, because this is the first time I've properly played with this mascara. I showed it in my video, um, makeup video on Wednesday. It's the Sky High 
mascara from Maybelline which is new and I joined TikTok last night well there's nothing else to do is there not sure if I like it yet or not I can see it would be a real time waster I think I'll be deleting it when real life starts getting going again but um, something to distract me in the meantime which can only be a good thing at the moment can't it so anyway, I've tried this, and this is three coats of it, and I am super impressed. It doesn't clump, makes my lashes look very, very long. Really impressed with it, I like it. I found it, I think it's out of stock everywhere online at the moment. Um, Boots not online, and Superdrug not online. I got this a couple of weeks ago, I think, the day before the first lock, the last lockdown started. I can't remember anyway. But I went into Superdrug. No, it was after the lockdown started. I went into Superdrug, didn't I? And um, it they had it in the store, in my local store. So um, I'm sure it will come back into stock online. I'll link it below anyway, even if it's not in the stock. There's a page for it, obviously. But um, yeah, I am very impressed with how that looks. I think it's some. Um, a very good mascara as i say three coats and no clumping at all and it really lengthens and volumizes anyway wednesday will is home will came home last night he's um i think he's awake i'm just about to take him a cup of tea in bed feeling like i've gone over there i did my makeup with no light on and i feel like i've gone a bit over the top with bronzer and not blended it properly but never mind we'll just get out of the light then you won't be able to see and it won't bother me um, plans for Wednesday. I really want to get the kitchen cupboards finished. I've been putting them off. There's a few left to do. Actually, probably more than a few. But I'm really going to work on getting that finished today. And that's going to be my aim for today. It's quarter past one. And the weather has not improved. I'm just making a big pot of chicken and vegetable soup. Which has got fennel and leek and carrot and potato and tarragon in it um, and homemade chicken stock that I made just over the chicken carcass from Sunday um, for lunch making that for lunch I had quite a good morning the cupboards in this kitchen take me so long to do although it's not the biggest kitchen in the world there are a hell of a lot of cupboards I remember when we first moved in we didn't even fill up half of them with our stuff we have gradually filled them over the years though what does that say about filling up the space to what's the expression filling up the space available just because it's available type of thing you know what I mean anyway but I have done these ones these big ones I've done those four, the two cupboards and two drawers there. I've done the top three there. And I've done the drawer of this one, the top three, the top two drawers there, I think. Yeah, I've done that one. I've got three drawers, I've got that cupboard left to do. Those three drawers, that's the bin, that doesn't need doing. That's this cupboard under the sink, those aren't drawers, which probably does need a quick reorganise, although I did it a couple of weeks ago. This cupboard here to do, that's a fake drawer. Um, those are fake drawers. Do you know, I had to check that to see if those were fake drawers then. This one I've already done. This one I did last week. That's my baking cupboard. Um, these ones only have, that one doesn't need doing because that's my knife drawer and that I did that quite recently. And um, that only has chopping boards in it. That one's empty, empty drawer, look. That one's just got oven gloves in but needs a wipe out. That one I've done, that's another roundy round cupboard. And then this big one I've done here, I've got to do the ones along there, those three. Seems like quite a lot I've still got to do. And this one, this cornery one here, which is like snacks and biscuits and stuff. That one there. So still got quite a lot to do, although the ones I've got left to do, I've done the most difficult ones, I would say. But, God, it's boring. I always start this with such enthusiasm and I feel like I've got more cupboards than I remember every time I do the kitchen, which is not often, let me tell you. Just put some food out for the birds and some seagulls have arrived, look. Oh, he's got that big piece of French stick. I was gonna break, it was too hard to break up into bits, so I thought I knew the seagulls would come and take the big bit. I put some chopped peanuts out for the little birds as well. 
It's getting on for half past five. I'm absolutely knackered. I feel like I've done a really hard day's work. I still haven't finished all the cupboards, but I've made really good progress. I've only got very few left to do. And I'm feeling quite positive about that. All good. I'm going to order another of those Lazy Susans that I have in my, um, with all my skincare in it for this cupboard up here because it's all bottles and you have to move everything to see what you want. So I'm feeling like if I put a Lazy Susan in it. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do there. I should finish them tomorrow morning um, easily. It's probably just an about an hour's work left to do. But I feel very good about what I have done. I'm bloody sick of the inside of my kitchen today, I can tell you that. I'm making a chicken fajita pie for dinner, which is basically a chicken chili. I realised that Tesco didn't bring my chicken fajita spice mix. Um, I buy the packets of it. Um, so I had to Google how to make it and I actually had all the ingredients to make it myself. So there we are, saved myself a fortune probably in the long term. Now I know how to do that. Um, then with the, I got the recipe out of the mail for the thing I'm doing tonight. They did a health, the big health kick it was called at the beginning of the year. Um, I don't generally buy the mail, I have to say. I'm not a newspaper reader and certainly not a mail reader. I bought it purely for the big health kick. Um, the pull-out bit. I've, used, I've cooked several of the recipes out of it and it's quite good. But it says to use Weight Watchers wraps for the top, cut into bits. And frankly, I cannot be asked with cutting anything into bits and fannying about. So I am doing tortilla chips interspersed with grated cheese and sliced green jalapenos for the top and then it goes into the oven and cooks all in one and comes out delicious and crunchy hopefully that's the plan anyway despite the fact i've been nowhere today oh did i give you an update on the treadmill i can't remember if i did or not looks like the treadmill has probably died and gone to treadmill heaven but we worked out we'd had it for 17 years and it was second hand when we got it so it's done when ashley was running marathons more regularly marathons and half marathons um he used it a lot a lot for one when he did the london marathon the second time he did all of his training on the treadmill so it's not really surprising it but we we could get someone in to try and fix it, but if it's a new motor, which is likely to be, it's gonna be 300 quid just for the motor. So I think we're gonna possibly look at getting a new one. Ashley, in a typical man fashion, is on about, oh, we can get one that connects to the internet and it's got this screen and it takes you for virtual walks outside. I'm like, I don't, if I want to go for a walk outside, I'll go for a walk outside. I don't want to go on a virtual walk outside, for God's sake. <laughs> What's that all about? Um, so, yeah, he wants the top of the range one, of course. And I'm like, well, why don't we just get one that does what we need it to do? I mean, he hasn't been on the bloody treadmill. Will, Will goes on it occasionally. Um, does a run on it a couple of miles every now and then. But Ashley hasn't been on it. Oh, for you two years three years probably to my knowledge so we really don't need one that's all singing and dancing and makes the tea and does the laundry do we really <laughs> that's a man thing isn't it it's definitely a man thing let me know if you have husbands partners other halves like that who always want the best one just because it's the best one good morning it's thursday that's what it looks like out there it's raining it was eight I think and um, I thought I'd get out early and do my walk because treadmill's still broken and ugh, really don't want to go out there in that I... look at how amazing that is so intense the colours oh rainbows make me happy just at the little bridge and I thought I would show you how gushy the waterfall is today. Look at that. That's quite impressive. More impressive than last time I showed you, isn't it? When I was banging on about coverless duvets last week, somebody in the comments suggested to me, and it has been suggested before, 
to try the burrito method of putting on a duvet cover and I have seen this over the years but I've never tried it so I thought why not try it on camera. Try using the burrito method. The amount of time it took to do that, I could have pretty much put the duvet in and faffed about with it. But never mind, we'll persevere. Right, next I have to roll it up from the top on both sides. When I get to the end, do some weird flipping the end over thing that I didn't really get. Right, I can see a big problem here. Because I've got it's not going to stay rolled is it when I go around the other side maybe it is this is a whole new level of faffing a whole new level of faffing right so the end is over the end of the bed so presumably I need to sort of pull it back a bit like that and that's sort of not quite right. Right, so that's rolled up and then we do some weird... I don't know quite how I'm going to do that because my duvet cover isn't, doesn't have an opening all the way along the bottom. It's only the sort of central bit. So the seam is here rather than at the end. I need to watch the video again. Right. Let's give it a go then. I'm not sure it will work, but so I'll put my hand in there and tuck all of that into there. Well, it doesn't go in. It's unrolled itself as well. I could have had this duvet in the bloody cover on the bed, the pillowcases on, and be drinking my coffee by this point in proceedings, let me tell you. Right, I have enlisted my glamorous assistant to help me with this. Hello. <laughs> you can go to the other That's end. That's cropping my head off, yeah. He's watched the video and he says, I don't reckon this is going to be easy to do. Now, I have to say, I could not do this by myself, so on this size duvet, with this size duvet cover. So, we got to the bit where we've rolled it all up. And then we're doing the bit where we reach into the middle and flip it round or whatever it was. So it seems to me that you have to get into the middle bit. Right, yeah. And then flip the whole thing into it. We give up. And this, boys and girls, is why I don't change my duvet with the burrito duvet method. Now made the bed with normal method of putting in the duvet cover, which I will never moan about again. It was so much easier and less stressful. And uh, I have watched a few more of the top viewed burrito duvet method videos on YouTube to see if I could see what I was doing wrong. And I think that I had two problems. I think I've got a much, much thicker winter duvet on than any of the duvets shown with the burrito method on the videos. Also, my duvets, don't the covers do not open all the way to the end. They have about that far of seam, which I think makes it made it tighter to put onto the end. I think the fact my duvet is so thick and it's not feathers it's um 
hollow fiber or whatever whatever the thing that isn't feathers that they stuff duvets with um and it doesn't roll well so i've got a super king bed as well so it's bigger and unwieldy than um like a double or a king size the duvet and no way i could ever have done it by myself because the duvet unrolled itself we just didn't get the bit about the middle at all i mean even william he's quite clever he's doing a science degree <laughs> You know, which I realise doesn't make him good at making beds, but he's usually quite good at... Th I'm better at words and stuff, and William's more practical, so that's why I got him to come and look at it, to make sure I wasn't doing anything I shouldn't have been doing, but yeah, feel like... I will give the burrito, burrito method another go when I put my summer duvet on. <laughs> don't hold your breath waiting for that because it won't be till about april it is just after three o'clock and i am just back from aldi and i thought i'd show you what i bought because opportunities for entertaining content are few and far between aren't they and i love a good aldi haul myself hang on sorry i'm just trying to rearrange you so you're a little bit higher there we are how's that that's okay for you so, went in for bread because I've used more bread than I anticipated. A new Aldi magazine is out, by the way. Exciting times. <laughs> yeah, went in for bread, came out with two bagfuls of stuff and a box of Corona for, well, he, he paid for his own Corona. But there we are. I got two bunches of daffodils for 95p each because they're a little sign of spring. I got some tulips last week. I think I showed you them end of last week or the beginning of this week might have been the beginning of this week <laughs> all the days just blur into one all the weeks just blur into one don't they um, got some salt and vinegar crisps for ashley i am off crisps at the moment um or that sort of crisps anyway um i bought let me just show you in the old time get it out um some popcorn this is coconut and vanilla flavor which i thought sounded lovely and it's 130 calories for that big bag which i didn't think was bad at all so that one um halloumi fries for the freezer 2.99 i think these are these are so nice love these um will chose these and there's some mars ones as well twix caramel center biscuity things which look bloody delicious but i won't be able to eat them so i won't be telling you whether they're nice or not <laughs> Um, bananas, baked small bananas. I really like these with yogurt or on top of um, overnight oats for breakfast. And I like the small ones. They're just the right size for me. I don't like the big ones. They were like a pound or something, I think. Um, I got two of these. These are the little sugar-free sweets. So strawberry ones and the rhubarb and custard ones. I also really like the butterscotch ones i've just finished those these are just nice for a little hit of sweetness um sort of after lunch i find myself craving something sweet just something little and sweet after lunch so one of those is perfect i got some own brand zaflora fabulosa this is sugared almonds is the scent i've not had this one before oh that's nice not too overpowering very pleasant those are the mars squishy biscuits which again look absolutely bloody delicious this is for me chocolate covered rice cakes which look marginally less delicious how many calories are those those are 82 i think i think that says 82 i haven't got my glass on so i'm really peering at that got some of this black kale to go with our dinner tonight really like this cavolo nero isn't it um, British Cavallo Nero Black Hell, yeah, really like this, very nice indeed. Got some ham, just some breaded dry curl ham. Will picked this as well, Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Peanut Butter. That sounds nice, I could get on board with that for definite. Um, I got Lentil Curls, one of you guys recommended these to me and I really like them. This is my favourite flavour, the Thai Sweet Chilli and these are 91 calories a bag and i like these because you get lots in a bag it feels like a substantial snack 
Um, and finally, finally, I think, oh no, two more things. I got one of these reed diffusers, which you know I love. This is the number one lime basil and mandarin, which is my favorite for in the kitchen. And the last one I had in the kitchen was the Blackberry and Bay. I think it's Blackberry and Bay, the, the copy of the Blackberry and Bay, Joe Malone anyway. And it wasn't brilliant, but this one is always nice. The Blackberry and Bay, I felt the scent wore off after a week or so, but yeah, got that one for the kitchen. And finally, I don't know what came over me, I've got Mrs Hinch's activity journal. I just saw it, it had her book and the activity journal and I picked up the book and then I thought now I'm going to get the activity journal and I just flicked through it and thought it looked quite nice. It was 5 99 With that is today's Aldi shopping. I have finally finished every single kitchen cupboard, yay go me! Very happy with that. Just leaving for tomorrow. I want to clean all these. These are the sort of tea and coffee shelves up here. Give those a clean and a sort out. And the windowsill needs a big sort out. And there's some bits and pieces over there as well. But yeah, very happy with that. Just finished the last cupboard. I've added another of these Lazy Susans, which I love, um, to this one, which I don't know why I didn't do this five years ago because it makes it so much easier to get to everything in that cupboard. And also, bizarrely, makes it easy to, um, make, makes it, make me, oh God, I can't speak. Makes it so I can fit more in the cupboard more easily, which is lovely. I got, I got it from Amazon, I've shown you before, but I'll link the Lazy Susan in the description box. It was about 12.99 or something, I think, but they're, they're nice and sturdy. They can hold a lot and they come in different colors, which makes me happy. <laughs> Good morning. Actually, it's not even morning. It's 12.40 and it's Friday. And having a big editing day today. Filming and editing, actually. I'm just looking at my hair. I've had a bobble hat on because I've been out for a walk and it was really cold. And I seem to have completely flattened my hair and it's got weird sticky up bits. That's not good, is it? You can't be flat and sticky up. But hey, never mind. I have just been looking at a page that I keep bookmarked on my computer. As you know, I don't watch an awful lot of news. I look at the headlines, so I am aware of what's going on in the world, but I don't indulge in a big news fest at all. It just, I find it very stressful and unpleasant. So I'm aware of what's going on in the world, but I don't need to listen to all the comment and speculation on it. But one thing I do look at every single day is this page. Um, it's the vaccine tracker. It's a live update vaccine tracker. I'm going to put the link in the description box for anybody who wants it. But it's got at the top, it's all America. I think it's an American page. I think I got this from Dr. John Campbell. And it tells you how many doses they've got in every single state in America. But if you go down a bit further... You've got all the countries in the world and you've got the UK there and it shows look, 5.4 million doses of the vaccine and that's per 100 people, 8.14 have had their first dose of the vaccine. And that's just a nice figure and every day it goes up and every day it makes me realise we're heading towards improvement and I really like that because it's just... It's just a number on a screen. It's not for speculation and chat and blah de blah and You can see how all the other countries are doing as well. And um, yeah, I just really like it. It's something that I look at every day and gives me hope. So I'm going to link that in the description box if you want to bookmark it or go and have a look at it or anything because it's something that I really like. Um, anyway, I just came on to say goodbye for the week. I will see you again on Monday. Um, editing today and tomorrow so you'll see this on Sunday hope you're having a lovely weekend when you watch this hope this week has been enjoyable thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon bye bye